Hi, this is Brandon Moon with Leland Fly Fishing. I want to welcome you to Fly Tie Night tonight. Tonight we're going to introduce you to a new pattern. This is a March Brown Soft Hackle Nymph. We'll go into why it's a soft hackle, but we're also going to introduce you to a new feather to tie and use for your soft hackles. So the reason we make our March Brown soft Nymphs soft hackles is because March Browns have very, very strong legs, so they really are almost darn near impossible to pry off the rocks. So really when you see these nymphs and the fish start feeding on them, it's because they're beginning to emerge and come to the surface where they're gonna fly away. So that's why it's important to tie your March Brown nymphs as soft tackles to complete this cycle for them and the fish will key in on them as they emerge and look like they're emerging out of their shot. With that, if you find any value in this video, we'd invite you to like, comment, subscribe, and hit the bell to receive future notifications. This really helps us as we continue to strive to bring good content to the community. It helps our content get seen by more people. So. With that, we're going to go ahead and get started. For the hook, we're using the ML501, size 14. You can do a 16 or a size 12. This is the Jig Tagata hook from Moonlit. It's a standard forged hook, so it's stronger. The bead we're going to be using on this is a size 3, 0 millimeter copper slotted tungsten. So with that, we're going to get started. Here's our thread. We're using the Semperfly Classic Wax 12 aught in rust. We will go ahead and put our hook in the vise. And then we'll just go ahead and get started. So I'm just going to lay my thread right there behind the bead few wraps secure that down just for good habit measure I try and use that tag end to create a nice smooth underbody this is the foundation to my fly and is an extremely important thing to have a good foundation everything stems from your foundation so I'm going to wrap just to about the bend of the hook trim that out another one or two wraps to get to the bend And then we're going to tie in our tail. For our tail, we're just going to use a regular pheasant tail. And I'm just going to take a clump of fibers. I want, you know, about six, four to six fibers. I'm not going to count them. I don't want to spend a whole lot of time doing that. I'm going to measure this out. I want it to be roughly the length of the hook shank. If I tie in a little long, I can always shorten it up but I can never lengthen it so I'll just secure that down going up I'll just kind of preen those up just a little bit and give me three wraps underneath and that just helps prop that tail up now I'm just gonna Secure this down. It's kind of starting to get up there. I'm going to trim this so that it goes right up into the bead. Finish securing that down. Now I'm just gonna go, and for my body, I'm using Semperfly's tying wire. I'm using the .3, really because I just did less wraps with the .3 and gives me a little bit heavier fly as well. I'm gonna tie this in at the top and I'm gonna slide it up underneath that bead. Secure that down. I wanna wrap a thorax area that's roughly about a bead's length. Okay. 
Now I'm just gonna half hitch this here behind the bead. Now I'm gonna take and rest my thread off to the side and we'll start our wire. So I'm gonna start with a wrap and then I'll use my rotary feature. I'm gonna give me a good three wraps and then I just wanna make sure I pinch that so that I don't have any gaps and it's wrapped nice and tight. Now I'm just gonna wrap this wire rearward all the way back to the tail. And I'm just using my rotary feature on my Nirvana rotary vise to give me a nice smooth wrap. Now I've got it wrapped all the way back to the tail there. I'm going to take this and I'm going to wrap it forward with open wraps to create a nice segmented ribbing over the top of that wire. I'll wrap that up over the top there. Now I'm just going to helicopter that out. Okay. I'm just going to take my thread, wrap that back to that point right there where my th wire started at. I'm going to take some Wonder Wax, okay, and I'm just going to put a little bit of wax on this thread, just make it nice and tacky. Then I'm going to take some Vacuna dubbing in the UV Fiery Brown. And I really just want a small pinch about like this. Okay, and I'm just going to take a little bit of dubbing and create a dubbing rope. And I found that smaller amounts are easier to work with than larger amounts. Nice buggy dubbing. Now I'm just going to wrap this dubbing here and it's just going to go over that point where that bead is. I want to create a nice thorax here. This thorax is going to do a couple things. It's going to give me my thorax to my body but it's also going to help splay out my hackle fibers. For our hackle today, we're going to be using a Bob White quail. So you can see I've already taken my feather and I've stripped it down. You can see it's a pretty thick feather stem down here. I'm stripping that up into the where it gets thinner. I'm going to take my fingertips. You can take hackle pliers and put them on there and create your pull those back. Okay, so now I'm going to have my tie-in point just like so. So I'm going to take and tie that in right at that tie-in point there behind the bead. Two wraps over the top, you can see that kind of sink, seeps that down. Then I'm going to go in front one time. Now I'm going to trim off this tie-in point right there. I can give it another locking wrap for good measure. Rest my thread over my bob, thread bobbin rest there. Now I'm going to take my tie flies hackle tweezers. I like these on soft hackles and a little more brittle hackle stems. They're light. But I'm going to take this and I'm going to be doctoring and palmering this back. And I just pulled that out of my stem. Okay, so I'm going to continue palmering and doctoring those fibers so they go rearward. See, it's a brittle, brittle hackle stem there.
make sure we palmer all these fibers rearward okay now I'm going to take my thread I'm going to secure that heckle stem down now I'll pull it back a little bit create a little bit of a collar in between the hackle and the bead. I'll just take my whip finish tool one two three four nice good tight whip finish trim that out now I'm just going to take my fingers grab that hackle stem and try and pop it out. If it doesn't pop all the way, I can trim it with my scissors, but much cleaner if you are able to just pop that out. And so you can see I've got a little bit of that stem right there, but this quail is gonna give you a nice flowing action. It's got some modeled looks to the fibers and it's just a real effective pattern you can see the modeling on that those fibers as we rotate it gives it a nice good buggy look to it so we want to thank you again for watching the video if you find any value in this please make sure to like the video leave us a comment hit the subscribe button and the bell to receive future notifications and we look forward to tying for you again in the future. Have a wonderful day.